Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching this video. Today, I'm going to talk about our work, REST, which is a reciprocal framework for spatiotemporal coupled predictions. The outline of my talk is as follows. We will begin with the introduction of the research. And then, we will present our approach, namely the REST framework, and its learning details. Afterwards, we will report the experimental settings, results and analysis. Finally, we will draw conclusions. First of all, let's start with the research background. Time series prediction has been an enduring research topic for decades, since it's important for various industries. Traditionally, researchers make predictions by analyzing the patterns of the observations of time series. However, in recent year, researchers attach great attention to the interactions of time series, and utilize them to improve the prediction accuracy. In such context, graph convolutional networks, or GCNs, have become the most effective models. The prerequisite of the GCNs is a well-defined graph. However, in many real-world scenarios, there exists only rare useful spatial information, which limits the performance of GCNs. Besides, the spatial dependencies among time series are usually multimodal and isomerous, which makes the situation even worse. Therefore, we argue that the current GCN paradigm for spatiotemporal predictions could be improved. One natural idea is to model the temporal patterns and spatial dependencies in a coupling way. Now, let me show you the formal description of the problem, spatiotemporal coupled predictions. Given n time series, the goal is to jointly learn functions f and g to predict the trend of time series, which is hat y, as well as to infer their underlying spatial dependencies, multiple g's, based on the observation records, x, for all time series, and their predefined or randomly initialized spatial dependencies g0. However, there are three difficulties concerning spatiotemporal coupled predictions. Firstly, from the data property aspect, we consider there are only rare spatial labels, so it's impossible to learn a model in a supervised manner. Besides, since the information of time series may be limited and noisy, it's also not easy to extract it effective features and learn a mapping function to measure the distance of two time series. Secondly, from the learning aspect, because we want to learn spatial inference and temporal prediction jointly, both sides of the model influence each other compactly. As a result, without effective inductive bias, the model is easy to overfit the noises and the learning procedure may become unstable, especially during the parameter initialization stage. Thirdly, from the practicality aspect, we aim to explore potential linkage among all time series vertices rather than re-quantifying labeled linkages, the complexity demands great consideration. Assuming there are n time series in total, the possible linkage will be n square, which brings a significant computational burden for the neural networks. To solve the aforementioned problems, we propose a novel approach named Reciprocal Spatiotemporal Framework, or REST for short. As we can see in the diagram, our REST framework consists of a spatial side networks, named edge inference networks, or EINs for short, and a temporal side graph convolutional networks, or GCNs for short. Let's see how the REST framework work briefly. To address the first issue and measure the multimodal, isomerous edge features among vertices, we develop the EINs, through the orange line, which transform the time series from the time domain to the frequency domain, and then learn a function to measure the distance among them. To address the second issue, we develop a phased heuristics, which drive the training process to converge easily and stably. To address the third issue, we use activated EINs, through the blue line, to sample several potential neighbors of the central vertex before each epoch, rather than calculate all possible linkage each time. Finally, to make spatiotemporal predictions, we integrate existing graph convolutional networks, like DCRNN or Graph WaveNet into the REST framework. Now, let's zoom in to the edge inference networks. To infer the multimodal edge labels, it's necessary to obtain useful features of time series. Since there exists considerable noise in time series, in this work, we analyze the time series in the frequency domain. Specifically, we choose MEL frequency kepstrom coefficients, or MFCCs, as great features, which have widely used in audio signals processing. To obtain MFCCs, fast Fourier transform is applied to the time series, and then several filter banks are designed to get more compact and robust representations of time series than those of normal frequency ones. 
After obtaining the MFCCs, we treat them as useful features, and learn a fully connected layer to infer isomerous spatial dependencies among time series, which will be the spatial input of the GCNs. Based on self-deduced multimodal spatial labels from the last slide, now, we can apply graph convolutional operators to aggregate useful neighbor information to the central vertex. Since we have multimodal edge labels, we enhance the original diffusion convolutions. Given the enhanced multimodal graph convolutions, the REST framework can integrate the state of the art spatiotemporal prediction model. Taking the DCRNN as an example, we can use a GRU structure and replace the original graph convolution and spatial labels to obtain the temporal feature. Finally, by training a fully connected layer, we can get the final predictions. Now, let's focus on the reciprocity of the REST framework. As we have mentioned before, in many real scenarios, we don't have enough useful labels to learn the spatial dependencies among two time series vertices. However, through the REST framework, we connect the spatial and temporal side together to optimize model parameters. Therefore, the temporal labels can be fully utilized to help the EINs to infer spatial labels with higher quality. Correspondingly, EINs could provide better graph structure for GCNs to make more accurate predictions. And with the training procedure going iteratively, both sides could benefit each other and finally get the optimal parameters. However, one may also argue that could the framework acts in a reciprocal way? Could the spatial side and the temporal side networks hinder each other? Actually, the answer is yes. As we mentioned before, without effective inductive bias, the model is easy to overfit the noise and make the training procedure unstable. Therefore, we develop the phased heuristics to drive the REST framework to converge correctly. Before introducing the phased heuristics, we first report our loss function selection, which is L1 loss. Now, let's see how the phased heuristics work. In the first stage, we train the integrated GCNs with limited spatial labels. Specifically, we apply curriculum learning with inverse sigmoid decay to train. As a result, the loss drops rapidly and then rebounds, because the decoders gradually begin to conduct self-regression, rather than depending on the ground truth. In the second stage, we train EINs to learn multimodal spatial dependencies. Similar to the first stage, we gradually make GCNs use the spatial labels inferred by EINs and lead the gradients to the EINs. As we can see, the loss keeps reducing. In the third stage, the EINs begin the explore potential linkages among all datasets, rather than re-quantifying the links that are already known. Note that since the EINs sample k possible neighbors before each epoch, the training complexity reduces from O, n squared, to O, k n, where k is far less than n. Now, let me report our experimental settings, results, and analysis. To test and verify the REST framework, we have designed and conducted a collection of experiments on real-world datasets Metropolitan Los Angeles, which records traffic time series of Los Angeles Highway, and Wikipedia English, which records web traffic of Wikipedia entries. This table shows the statistics of both datasets. We compare the REST framework with seven representative approaches, including autoregressive integrated moving average model, vector autoregression model, support vector regression model, fully connected long short-term memory model, WaveNet, diffusion convolutional recurrent neural networks, graph WaveNet. To evaluate the performance of all the included models, we introduce five metrics, including mean absolute error, mean squared error, root mean squared logarithmic error, mean absolute percentage error, symmetric mean absolute percentage error. We first report our main results on different datasets, which are the average prediction errors under different metrics. Examining the results on the Metropolitan Los Angeles dataset, we can notice four phenomena. First, VAR considers the spatial dependencies of time series, however, its prediction error is not always lower than that of ARIMA, which indicates that handcraft spatial labels may carry noises and thus may not offer a good base. Second, all neural network-based models significantly outperform the previous ones, especially when the prediction horizons become longer. That is because RNN and TCN structures are with great abilities to model the nonlinear and long-term temporal dependencies. Third, spectral graph convolution-based approaches, namely DCRNNs, graph WaveNet, and the REST framework, gain further improvement, comparing with other deep learning models without considering spatial features. 
It demonstrates that graph convolution is capable of making use of spatial dependencies. Fourth, the REST framework made the most accurate predictions among these methods, which should attribute to the EINs inferring better spatial labels and GCNs getting better model parameters. On the Wikipedia English dataset, we can also observe the similar results. Besides, because the graph wavenet model demands learning the embedding of time series and compare them during each epoch, it ran out of GPU memory in our experimental environment, and thus could not get the results. The depth of graph convolution and the predefined number of modality are two important hyperparameters of the REST framework. Thus, in this side, we report how the performance of the REST framework changes with these two hyperparameters. Firstly, let's focus on the depth of graph convolution. As we can see, no matter for DCRNN or REST framework, the models get their best performance when k is equal to 2. Secondly, let's focus on the predefined number of modality. As we can see, both under single modality, REST1 performed much better than DCRNN with various k, which indicates that the EINs can effectively re-quantifying the weight of edge labels. Moreover, when m is equal to 2, the REST2 outperform much more better, which indicates that it's necessary to use higher dimension vector to describe the features of edges. To verify the effectiveness of the phased heuristics, we conduct an ablation experiment. This table shows the performance of the REST framework with the phased heuristics or not. As we can see, the REST framework with the phased heuristics predicted more accurately than that without the heuristics. However, examining the single result of the experiments, we notice that the REST framework without the phased heuristics could also get the prediction accuracy as lower as that with the phased heuristics. But the REST framework without the phased heuristics were more easily to get early stopped, and thus lead to higher standard deviation. In this slide, we visualize the spatial dependencies of the last 51 vertices on the Metropolitan Los Angeles dataset, with A, from handcraft labels, B and C, from EINs, and D, from graph wavenet. As we can see in the red rectangle, the EINs gave different spatial labels compared with the handcraft ones, which promoted the GCNs to make more accurate predictions. Besides, in the purple rectangle, the EINs found a new linkage, which brought the diversity of the structure. Comparing the inferred spatial labels from the EINs and from the graph wavenet, we can observe that the spatial labels from the EINs remain sparsity, while those from the graph wavenet were dense and tiny. As a result, the EINs take advantage of controlling the complexity. To draw conclusions, there are three main contributions of this work. Firstly, we develop the reciprocal spatiotemporal framework for spatiotemporal coupled predictions. Secondly, we design the phased heuristics to drive the REST framework to converge more stably. Thirdly, we conducted adequate experiments on two real-world datasets and verified the effectiveness of the REST framework. In the future, we are going to focus on two more aspects of the research. Firstly, we plan to introduce more feedback to train EINs to improve reciprocity. Secondly, we plan to fuse more information to learn better spatial labels and make more accurate predictions. That is all about our research. Thanks for watching this video.